This channel contains mature subject matter, so if you're not 19 years or older, don't watch this channel. With that being said, let's get into it. Hey everybody, in my last update, this is what the girls were looking like. They're getting pretty full in their one gallon pots and they're getting bigger in the tent. So it's time to transplant again and move these girls into the 3x3 tent. My 3x3 tent is a Vipar Spectra. It was one of the only budget grow tents that advertised no light leaks. In between grows, I thoroughly clean my tent with Clorox bleach. I vacuum out the air inlet because it gets pretty dusty. I also vacuum out my oscillating fan and my stationary fan. In the 3x3 tent, I'll be running the 1600 watt Flyzen LED grow light. It's time to transplant and I was gonna put them into two gallon pots, but I don't have any at the moment, and to save a trip to town, I've decided to just use three gallon pots that I have. If you haven't seen my Living Organic Super Soil video, be sure to check it out. The roots aren't quite as white as I like to see them. There's a couple spots that are a little tanned in color. I'm not sure why this is. One day I left my fan off in the grow tent and it got almost up to 28 degrees Celsius. So it could have been a little bit warm for the roots. Either way, the plants are overall very happy. I remove any leaves that are touching the soil or very close to touching the soil. This helps prevent mold and mildew and it also helps increase airflow underneath the canopy. Whenever I transplant, I like to give the plants their first watering in with kelp water. The kelp contains many trace minerals which help the plant and boost the immune system. It also contains natural growth hormones. I use the same kelp to foliar spray after transplant because it does have over 60 trace minerals which are readily absorbable through the leaves. Just to help the plants adjust for the first few days, I'll keep the lights on low and keep them quite far away from the plants. This will just help them deal with transplant and help them get used to the new setting. For me, plant training is continuous all the way through the summer. I like to start when they're young by removing the big fan leaves. The reason I do this is to allow more light to the lower branches. When the lower branches get more light, the same amount of light as the upper growth, it delivers more auxin growth hormones to those growth tips. Doing this, as well as other low stress techniques that I'll show you throughout the summer, will help create a plant with a large flat canopy rather than a plant that looks like a Christmas tree. Since then, it's been about a week and a half. I've been watering every other day with a pH of 6.1 to 6.2, and I've done one compost tea. 
I'll be getting into how I make my compost teas in very recent videos. I just didn't have time to record this one. This is about one week later, and you can see how removing the large fan leaves and opening up the light to the lower branches has allowed explosive sideways growth and much more bushy plants. As the plants stretch, I'll continuously remove the upper large set of fan leaves only on the main stem. As we move into springtime, the risk of fungal gnats increases. I like to use Sticky Sticks by Safer's brand. I find other sticky pads, things that sit on the soil, give the gnats an, a nice little home to sit under. And having the sticky pads suspended over the soil seems to be very beneficial. And this is how the cannabis looks right now. Hopefully next time you see it, we'll be transplanting these girls outside into their 50 gallon pots. Last time you saw the tobacco, it wasn't doing so well. A lot of the leaves were yellow, a lot went into flower, and a lot of them were stretching. So what I've done is I've taken my best two, and actually the only two that hadn't gone into flower yet, and I put them into bigger pots with well amended soil and compost. They've been sitting outside in their new pots in the greenhouse for just over a week now and they seem to not be stretching anymore and they have a nice green pigment. So I think what happened is that the plants just got a little suffocated in their pots and I think they were a little bit starved of nitrogen. So I think as a last defense they went into flower just to try and reproduce. I've started an experiment where I have seeds from 2017 and seeds from 2019. I've taken the four strongest plants from each one and they're all doing fantastic right now. And I'm not gonna keep them in their three inch pots nearly as long as the last plants. And hopefully all of these will do just fine. The tobacco harvest from 2019 is still fermenting in the proofing cabinet. The leaves mainly near the base still have some sap that's seeping out and once most of the sap is gone, I think it's done fermenting. If you have experience with it, let me know. I'd actually love to hear what people have to say and, and uh, how people know when they're done fermenting. I've heard different things, so let me know down in the comment section. If you haven't already, make sure you hit subscribe. Coming up pretty soon, I'm going to be mixing up over 200 gallons of super soil for my cannabis and tobacco, and I'll be documenting as I grow in 2020. Also, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them. Hit the thumbs up, hit the notification bell, and thanks for watching right to the end. We'll see you guys later.